I'm your host, welcome to 23. You're joining me for High School Story Class Act, Book 3, Chapter 3. I spy at the park. That was a lot of hugging. Since when are my dad and Miss Maddox that close? The two of you gape at her dad and Miss Maddox as they pull apart from their embrace, where his dad gives her a shaky, nervous smile. Mr. Silva opens the car door for her, glancing around anxiously before climbing into the driver's seat. Rory stares after them as they drive away, her mouth open. What the heck is happening? My dad said he'd be home late tonight because of work. Well, uh, that sure didn't look like work to me. I knew something was off when my dad started going out more and coming home really late. God forbid your dad has a social life. They must be having an affair. An affair. Men and women can just be friends. It's pretty normal. I have tons of friends who are girls. Of course, men and women can be just friends. I just meant, if they were friends, why wouldn't Dad tell us? Because you don't need to know every friendship that the dude has. Maybe it's a new friendship? I don't tell my family every single fr time I make a new friend. Maybe. There might be more, or, yeah, be more to the story than considering. I wouldn't jump to conclusions yet. Should we head home? You know, Rory, who's still staring in the direction Mr. Silva drove off, we walk back home together in a glum silence. The next day at Rory's house. The friends gather somberly in the living room. Alright, emergency meeting time, Rory's dad edition. I never thought we'd have to say that. This is so crazy. My parents may be divorced, but at the least adultery was uh, never in the picture. I can't imagine what you're going through, Rory. Me neither. My parents were probably lab-grown in test tubes to uh, be each other's perfect matches. I would have thought the same about my parents up until yesterday. Is it safe to discuss this in your house? Aren't your parents around? Nah, my mom's gone shopping with Billy's mom, and my dad is outside working on the yard, so he'll be out there for a while. I really just wants my answers, but I don't want to go to my dad directly if I'm overreacting. So you need proof. You feel something vibrate on the couch next to you. You look down to see... Sky! How dare you bring that... <laughs> Mr. Silva's phone! No, oh, it's a text from Miss Maddox. Should we read it? Um, well, what are we waiting for? It's a perfect opportunity. Are you... Sure I should. It seems like an invasion of privacy. You're already meeting to invade your dad's privacy. We may not get a better chance to find out what's going on. You're right. I just hope we don't get caught. Roy taps the screen and frowns. He has his phone password protected. Well, perhaps he has the password written down somewhere. I know my mom always leaves herself little clues in case she forgets. Good thinking. It might be by his charger. You all rummage around the living room, searching for clues. Here's a post-it note with something scribbled on it. Your dad has terrible handwriting. It says, future Oscar winner. Uh, does your dad stand any actors? Not really. He's never been a big movie or theater person. He just watches all the plays I'm in. Well, that gives me an idea. Let's go to Google. Wait. What? You act like I fucking know. I give two craps of. You know what? Hold on. Okay. Screen shakes and says wrong password. Well, I guess that wasn't it. It's someone who hasn't won an Oscar yet. Perhaps a relatively unknown actor. Do I have to type it again? I'll do it. Who's an underrated actor or actress Mr. Silva would know? Hmm. No, Denzel Washington won one, didn't he? I don't know. I don't fucking follow. <laughs> you act like I'm supposed to fucking know that. Well, I guess that wasn't it. Oh, it's someone who doesn't want to know. Are you, are you serious? No clue. Wait, I think I got it. I'm glad you do. You hand your phone to AJ, who enters Rory, and pre Oh, f*** off with this! 
the phone the screen unlocks and reveals the home screen. Good thinking, EJ. Rory opens the message app and gasps. These messages go back weeks. Ah, oh, what's the newest one, sir? 4.13 p.m. Can we meet at the shopping center? Uh, uh, downtown? Oh, no, that's Martin saying I thought it was her. Diana. Well, we're learning first names, no? I'd love to. Let's meet up at five. Maybe they're just friends. Like, holy shit. Wow, there's no way they're meeting up for that many parent-teacher conferences. Is there more? I'm so glad we got to see each other earlier. Me too, Diana. You're so jittery when you're out in public. You really don't need to be. Well, if Rory or Brenda saw us, I'd be busted. That's when we saw them at the park. Oh, it's uh, been going on before then. Rory scrolls back even further, back in the messages. One month ago. Is now a good time? No, I can't talk now. I'm with Brenda. Don't you think you should tell her about us? No! I'm waiting for the right time. It's just hard, okay? I know, and I'll be here for you whenever you decide. Ooh. You're all startled by the sound of the sliding glass door opening. It's Mr. Silva. Rory hastily sets the phone back on the couch just as her dad walks in your friend's freeze. Hey, kiddos. Having some fun? Uh, some weekend fun? Wait, that's my phone. Why were you looking at it? Oh, um... I was thinking about the getting this one. You are? Uh, yeah, um, really like the battery life? Mr. Silva praises you for a moment before smiling. Good call. It does last ages on a single charge. Crystal clear resolution, too. Yeah, totally. I, I just wanted to see how it felt in my hand. Gotta be mindful of uh, small fingers, you know? I hope that was okay, Dan. Not a problem. I feel like a trend center. Anyway, I need to go to the hardware store for a few things for the yard. Mr. Silva takes back his phone, grabs his keys from the bowl by the door, and heads up to his car. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you gonna stalk him? We know he's not going to the hardware store. No, 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 no! How do you know that? He hasn't read his text messages yet. He doesn't know they're supposed to meet. We have to follow him. Honestly, after those text messages, I'm with you. Then we can see for ourselves what they're doing. You hear Mr. Silva's car starting outside. We need to hurry. What do you say, Billy? Are you in? Well, Mr. Silva, we'll give you more clues as to what's going on with him and Miss Maddox. We're gonna Nancy Drew it, apparently, don't I? You shouldn't have to do this alone, Rory. Thanks, Billy. I knew I could count on you. You crowd to the window and watch Mr. Silva pull out of the driveway and start down the street. Let's go. We can't lose him. After piling into Rory's car, you speed off down the road to try and catch up with Mr. Silva. There's his car. Quick, it's going around the corner. Don't get too close. Rory follows around the corner, trying to keep his dad's car, or her dad's car, in sight. She stays a few cars behind, so you're not spotted. As you approach a stoplight, the cars in front of you go through the light, but Mr. Silva's car rolls to a stop. Oh no, he'll see us. We need to disguise ourselves. Grab a hoodie from the floor and draw the two big hood too big hood up over your face. Rory scrambles to wear sunglasses and a random hat. <laughs> okay. In the backseat, Sky stuffs her red hair into the beanie while AJ pops his shirt collar up to his cheeks. Everybody be cool. Okay. He threw cool out the door. You just stop at the light next to Rory's dad's car. You peek out from your hood to see if he's looking. Looks over at your car for a moment and then does a double take. Everyone, look less ourselves. Mr. Silva continues to look over suspiciously at all of you squinting a bit. <laughs> Just when you think he's recognized you, the light changes. Mr. Silva begins to drive away. Yikes, that was close. Let's be extra cautious from here on out. 
After carefully slipping into the parking lot, you and your friends huddle into the bushes about a dozen feet away. Mr. Silva checks his watch. Hmm, she's not here yet. Branches of the bush tickle your nose and arms as you try and get a closer look. You whisper to Rory. Ah, uh, it's kind of itchy in here. Hush, he'll hear you. Who will? Oh my god, why are you here? You all jump at the voice, showing, turning to see Morgan looking at you through the branches of your hiding spot. What are you dorks doing? Shh, not so loud. It's for Rory's family. Morgan rolls her eyes. Right, like I care about your family drama. Good? The losers. She walks off and Sky stares after her for a moment. Man, she is so cool. Focus, Sky. Look. Miss Maddox separates herself from a crown and greets Mr. Silva with a hug. Hey, Diana. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? They head for a bench and sit down. You can see that they're talking, but can't make out what they're saying from your hiding place. They're not looking our way. We can get closer. I agree. Go, 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 go. Stealthily as you can, you all quickly crawl to a bush closer to where Miss, uh, Mr. Silva and Miss Maddox are sitting. You strain to hear their words. This is so stupid. I know, I know. It's just that I've told you things that I haven't been able to tell Brenda. Well, it's hard, but that doesn't mean you have to keep hiding. I know, we talked about how you were raised. Right, and how I was raised doesn't really allow for this. And how, what exactly is this? They lower their voices to almost a whisper, and you all straighten hair. They seem absorbed in their discussion. Should we get closer? Let's stay here. But it's too risky. If we get caught, we'll be in so much trouble. Rory lets out a heavy sigh, staring at her dad through the hiding place. I ain't getting caught, fam. No, you're right. You go back to watching the pair of adults only catching bits and pieces of the conversation. Anyone read lips? I think Mr. S Silva said affair. No, wait, maybe he said his hair? Not super helpful. You didn't overhear all the conversation. Okay, while well, I was playing it safe, as Mr. Silva and Miss Maddox continue talking, his voice quavers and he chokes back a sob. I think he's crying. Mr. Silva sniffs and wipes at his eyes as Miss Maddox rubs his back comfortingly, and then... Achoo! The adults look confused, and this is why we didn't get closer. Training their necks in the direction of your hiding place. Did you hear that? It sounded like a sneeze. Why would a bush sneeze? Unless... Call like a bird. Ah! 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 Your friends look at you in shock. Mr. and Mrs. Silva's eyes linger on your bush for a few more moments before turning back to the conversation. Must have been a bird. Anyway. <laughs> okay, whatever. Ooh, good save, Billy. Whatever. Mr. Silva and Miss Maddox talk a bit more before sharing a long hug and going to separate ways. Once they're both out of earshot, you all emerge from the bush. So that was interesting. It wasn't exactly proof, but it definitely didn't help reassure they're just friends. At least we got to live our spy movie fantasies. Are you going to be alright, Rory? Let me know if you would like to talk about coping with parental divorce. I... God, I hope it doesn't come to that. I have a lot more to think about now. We should probably get back to my house. You follow Rory back to her car, her shoulder slumped, dejected. I never had to go through a parental divorce. My dad never wanted to be in my life, and he tried to kill me twice, so... Once AJ and Sky have uh, said their goodbyes, you're left alone with Rory. She sinks on the couch, putting her head into her hands. You wanna talk? Billy, if you found out your dad was maybe cheating on your mom, what would you do? You don't know that. You don't know. So this is actually really bad advice. I would have had an option number three. 
talk to your dad about him. You just ignore him? I didn't say I'd ignore it, but I wouldn't get into something that was between my parents. I guess that's smart. Roy lets out an audible sigh and suddenly gets up from the couch. What if my parents split up like AJ's parents did? Or what if I confront my dad and he deletes all the text messages so I'll have no evidence? Do you think he'd really do that? I honestly don't know. I feel like I know... I don't know anything anymore. Rory wrings her hands, emitting a frustrated groan. I feel so restless and confused and just... Ugh. I, I think I need some time to process this alone. I understand, Rory. Let me uh, know if there's anything else I can do. Cross the lawn to your house, waving goodbye to Rory before disappearing inside. The next week at rehearsal, you and John belt out the last verses of the musical number. Be collected, no more amazement. Tell your pity is hard. There's no harm done. Oh, woe the day. Billy, watch your tempo on that last line. You sounded a bit fast. Got it. I have never been one for musicals, and I'm not going to start now. And John, be uh, sure to enunciate the T in amazement and pityness. Pity is. Let's go back to the line. I will resist after Prospero threatens to have Ferdinand imprisoned. You nod and take your place as Rory glares at John, seething. No, I will resist such entertainment till mine an enemy has more power. Roy draws her sword, but John points at her, freezing her in place. Halt! Oh. I should act, uh, desperate? Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. Perfect, Billy. You would plead uh, with your father. He's just a, cast a spell on the love of your life. I have no clue. Rory, I'd like your fury to feel explosive. Prospero has made an outrageous accusation upon your honor. You seem off your game today. Right, maybe I can shout the first line and draw my sword more hastily. Let's uh, try it next rehearsal. We're out of time today. As you exit the auditorium with Rory, she stares at her feet, crestfallen. You, uh, holding up okay? Since the other day, I haven't been able to get my dad's affair out of my mind. I can't stop questioning everything. Like, how many things has been, have been lies? Does my dad really love my dad or my mom at all? Rory, you're going to drive yourself insane like this. You're right. I need to snap out of it. Would you be down to do something fun to take my mind off things? I uh, like... Ever been to the archery range on the other side of town? I went through a, sort of a Katniss phase, so I used to go there a lot. First of all, adorable. Second of all, I've never done archery before. Well, I'd be happy to show you around for the first time. It's uh, a great stress relief, since you have to stay focused. Would you come with me? Please, I need this. I can throw Rory to the archery range will help her relax and give you the opportunity to try archery. I would love to do some archery. That sounds amazing. I've never uh, even touched a bow before. This will definitely distract me from everything with, that's going on with my dad. The short car ride across town, you and Rory arrive at the archery range. There are a few other people squaring off across the hay targets of arrows whizzing around the air rapidly. Oh my goodness! An instructor watches from a distance and smiles as you approach her. <clears throat> mm, haven't seen you in a while, actually. Crowd of the flame, I believe. Hey there, are you guys looking to do some shooting? I brought my nine mil. Let's do this. I mean, what? <laughs> yep, I've uh, been here before, but Billy hasn't. Maybe you could give him a quick how-to. Sure, it's pretty easy. We'll give you a bow with a low pull weight to start. Once you uh, knock an arrow, draw the bow with three fingers and bring the string back all the way to your cheek. Aim at the target, let a slow breath, and release. 
Okay, wow. You nervously turn back to the barrage of pointy objects sailing at the breakneck speeds. Don't worry, as long as you follow the safety guidelines, you'll be fine. I haven't uh, had to take someone to the hospital this week, at least. What? So, wanna give it a try? Heck yeah, I'm so ready. Loving the enthusiasm. A good attitude is half the battle, you got this! You each get a bow and quiver of three arrows before being assigned a target on the end of the row. And the last one, never go out towards the targets to get your arrows until we say retrieve. You look at the target apprehensively as the other ar archers prepare to shoot. The instructors go back to observing the others. Um, there sure are a lot of rules. I was sort of imagining people riding around on horses shooting stuff willy-nilly. My mom would never have let me do this as a kid if that were the case. We used to go together at the peak of uh, my archery phase. Oh, so how many phases did you go through? Sea creatures, archery... What can I say? The world is an exciting place. Eh, just not with exciting people in it. I pull an arrow from the quiver and struggle to fit it in the bow. Need a hand? I'm struggling that bad, huh? Can I just throw the arrow? <laughs> but don't help me, I want to learn myself. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 I, I, I know, I can get it. After a few more minutes of struggling and some not-so-subtle hints from Ori, you finally knock the arrow. See? Told you I could do it. Now pull the string back. Do you remember how far? To, uh, my forehead. My cheek. You pull back the string and three fingers so it's resting against the skin of your cheek. Okay, you were really paying attention. Or you're just a natural. Now, all you have to do is aim and let out a slow breath. Thank you for reciting exactly what the instructor told me. You exhale as you remove your fingers from the string. The arrow sails through the air and hits the yellow ring just uh, below the bullseye with a thwonk. I did it! I'm Katniss Everdeen! Billy, that was amazing. And on your first shot, too. Ah, your turn. Your turn. Rory takes her place in front of the target, knocking her arrow and taking aim. Go, Rory, go. Clear your mind. Not exactly the easiest thing right now with everything that's been going on. So focus on not focusing. Or let's a sigh, closing your eyes for a moment before refocusing on the target. He releases the arrow and it strikes a perfect bullseye. See? Not focusing worked. You take turns of shooting your remaining arrows. After three bullseyes in a row, Rory turns to you look visibly calmer. I really did need this, Billy. Something that required being calm and just zoning out. I'm glad I finally got to come here, and I'm just glad I got to help, too. Even more than the archery, it was being with you that really helped the most. Rory. Want a hug? Having your free arm around her waist, you pull Rory into a hug. I'll always be here for you, here for you. remember? Rory wraps her arms around you in return, resting her chin on your head for her. On your head for a moment. On your head for a moment. Okay. I know. And I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Retrieve! You untangle from each other and walk silently over to collect your arrows. Had enough shooting for one day? We have only shot three arrows. I think so. Out of blast. Maybe we can bring the rest of the group back next week. I bet Sky and AJ could both benefit from archery anger management. You head back to Rory's car as the sun sets, feeling sore and happy. The next week at lunch. As you finish your sandwich, AJ checks his phone with a frown. But like, just released its full lineup. Staten House for Humanities will be competing. Um, Staten School for Humanities? Isn't that some prestigious art school? They're basically high school theater gods. They've won Spotlight three years in a row. So, they're uh, the favorites to win again? Realistically, with them in the running, I'm not even sure we have a chance of winning now. Hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Downy Frowny. Yeah, we're gonna need you to turn that upside down, okay? Or right side up, whichever way you want to look at him. That's okay, winning's not everything. Um, have you met me? Of course winning is everything. I mean, he's kind of right. 
anyone who says it's an honor to just be mentioned or nominated is lying. Um, no, not entirely. Still, we wouldn't automatically see ourselves them as enemies. They're, they're kids who love theater, just like us. Maybe we can uh, get to know each other. Why would we do that? Why wouldn't we? We're the same age, we have uh, so much in common, we should be friends. You're so pure, Billy. Pure and right. I want to make friends with them too. They must be cool and talented. Let's have a party. Uh, meet the cast and crew kind of thing. Sky looks at you and Rory, hopeful faces and smiles a little. I'm sure I can could convince my parents to let me host it, since they're all weirdly invested in this now and all. Well, perfect. Maybe Mr. Olsen can help us contact them. You spend the rest of the lunch period fantasizing about your first introduction to the Staten kids. Staten. I'm gonna go really high, prissy, and primmy. On the night of the party. You tear through your closet searching for just the right outfit. Are you ready to go yet? Mom is already in the car. No, I need to look perfect. I need to surpass women in the waiting game. If I'm the last one out, finally I can take the throne. Damn <sighs> kids are talented and cool. I want them to think I'm talented and cool too. Well, you better hurry up. Perfection, or we'll be late. DC heads out of the room and you study your closet one more time. Wear a special outfit to party to impress your competition. Like I said, if you need to dress up, that shirt is a no-go. That shirt is a fucking no-go, fam. Oh no, what's the other one? Why is it- You know what, fuck you and the shit you wrote in on? As it fades to underwear. You check yourself out in the mirror for a moment before Casey pops her head back into the room. It looks really nice. Everyone will be your friend in that outfit. Unless you're late. I hope so. Should we get going? To the party. Next time on High School Story. Wow. They made you pick an outfit right before ending the book. Or, uh, you know, chapter. But you get it. You're meeting your competition at the party. Will you uh, be best friends or worst enemies? Do I look like I care? I am an antisocial introvert who pretty much doesn't go to parties and... Haven't been to one since literally middle school. Are you serious right now? No. What? No. Like I give two craps about a party. <laughs> no further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hey, you know what? You know what would be really cool? If you hit that join button too. Make sure to hit the bell icon and receive notifications. Head down to the description below. Some links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. I'll be working a little bit more on um, Storyscape this evening, as well as probably the uh, chapter of uh, Vampire Girl or so. And then, well, long story short, is uh, we'll be dancing. We'll be dancing all night. We'll be dancing, especially when, you know, anyone else had this issue where unable to collect reward? You watch an ad and it goes away. It's like, okay. Um, there will be no uh, choices, it looks like, on Thursday. However, Friday will be Royal Masquerade and Mother of the Year. And then Saturday, Bloodbound. And Sunday, Desire and Decorum, which we've officially been caught up. And save the date. And without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Maybe stream. I'll be streaming on Twitch tonight. Bye.